From the Schmoes No Network Studios in Los Angeles, California, it's time for Guilty Movie Pleasures. And now, here are your hosts, two of the guiltiest cats I know, Josh Makuga and Steve Simone. Oh. What up, Schmoville? Schmoville. Guess who's back? <laughs> If you guys have never seen uh, Big Trouble in Little China, you don't know what we're talking about. So don't listen to the show until you've actually watched that movie. Or listen to the show and then go, all right, maybe I'll go check out that good, movie. It's a good call. I mean, listen, this show is always full of spoilers. So we, oh, should, be, point. we should be always be the, the audience should always be aware that we're going to do that. Yep, very good point. But if you guys want to hear spoilers and then go watch how awesome these spoilers actually are. Just go do that. This is our gang symbol for the day. This is what we'll be doing a lot of. A lot of ninja push. That was yeah. a good deep breath. That was a ninja good magic. Breath. Yeah. Steve, how are you, buddy? Dude, I'm doing awesome. Yeah? Did you uh, see Sin City this weekend? I didn't see Sin City. <laughs> I think uh, we weren't the only two people yes. that didn't see it. Well, that's why we're doing Big Trouble in Little China Day is because uh, Sin City came out this past weekend and it ate complete mm. shit. I mean, it died hard. It only made like six point five million dollars, as compared to Guardians of the Galaxy, which is in its fourth week, which made almost twenty. Wow! And I think the budget, JT, can you look up the budget for us on Sin City? It had to be somewhere around one hundred fifty million dollars. Wow! And well, you know made, what I didn't realize that? until uh, we we went back and revisited Big Trouble in Little China. I yeah. didn't realize that that was a box office bomb. Oh, t- t- ate all kinds of shit. It was, uh, I think, the the budget was twenty five million, and it only made gross over its entire time in the theaters eleven million. Wow! Yeah, and it's such a good movie. It's fantastic. It really is really good. And you know, it, it came it came after uh, Escape from New York, which okay. was um, Kurt Russell and John Carpenter's one of, first one together. Know, one of my all time favorites. Awesome. And I haven't seen that in forever. We're gonna have to We're watch have that to again. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And maybe even tied in with Escape from L.A. because that's another Kurt Russell. Another aw- dude. Yeah. Kurt Russell has had one of the most most fun careers ever. I was saying, do, what do you got the budget? Uh, it says not available, but the rumor is it's around forty million for Sin City. That was it. Yeah, because Robert Rodriguez does a lot of stuff his own in oh, the studio. That's right. Okay, makes sense. I mean, the movie is basically like half a cartoon, half yeah. live action. So, um, but uh, and then and then they did the thing. Uh, Carpenter and, and Kurt Russell did. I haven't seen that in forever. And that was, I mean, it, a very underrated movie. And that, from what JT told me in the car, that was his favorite Carpenter movie, period. And it may just be John Carpenter's best. But if you look at John Carpenter's IMDb... It's amazing. He's got, he like, did They Live, right? Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah, he did. And not only that, but he performed the song at the end of this movie. Get like, out that's, of here. Yeah, he's in a band. He scored movies. He directed movies. He was an actor, producer. He did everything. That Seems dude like was he a legend. Figured it, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And he was just like, you know what? I don't care if I make movies that people are going to talk about on a Guilty Movie Pleasure show. I just had a great time doing these Isn't that what it should really ultimately be about? Just having fun and enjoying it? Yeah, and not caring what critics come and say like, oh, Let's Be Cops sucked. It got 11% of Robin Tomatoes. I love Let's Be Cops. Was it funny? I haven't seen it. Yeah, I I see Damon Jr. at the gym all the time. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I never know what to say. He's so funny. (laughs) Because, like, I got introduced to him once. Oh, did you? Yeah, because he does stand-up. Mm-hmm. So we have a couple of mutual stand-up comedian friends, but okay. I'm always like, yeah, he doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> so I just pretend he's not there. I kind of do that with girls anyway. <laughs> uh, JT, let's play the trailer uh, to this movie, and then we're going to get into the plot. And then get. I mean, this movie, just too awesome. much fun. It's Yeah, and fun. so much happened. I was like, I hope Josh is smarter than me cause so, he, so he can explain the plot. <laughs> okay, good. Trailer. Yeah. Trailer. Up. Trailer. I'm guessing trailer. this is where you see coming in. And the pork chop express, and I'm talking to the pork, pork chop express. express. It's a pretty amazing planet we live on here, and a man would have to be some kind of fool to think we're all alone in this universe. <sighs> there is a amazing. hidden world where ancient evil weaves a modern mystery. What's going on here? Is some that. kind of magic? The darkest magic. Oh. <laughs> Dude. They call it Little China. Finally, we shall no. bring order out of chaos. Does it make sense that it's called Little China instead of Chinatown? Because there's no, like, Little China anymore. Yeah. Right? I don't know. Maybe that's what they call Chinatown in San Francisco? Oh, or maybe they didn't get the rights to call it Chinatown? Chinatown? Or maybe they didn't want to... Jack. Nobody would confuse it with Chinatown starring Jack Nicholson, would they? <laughs> I wouldn't think so. Or maybe they just wanted to sound cool because it's big trouble in Little Chat. That makes sense. Yeah. So the actual writers of the title. Because, like, big trouble in Chinatown. 
that would almost sound like a sequel to Chinatown yeah, with yeah. Jack Nicholson. <laughs> and then Jack Nicholson probably was like, I don't want to be associated with this movie. How are you gonna spring yeah, I, and just I the title is no perfect. Yeah. Trouble in Little China. And I remember when, JT, you can cut this if you want. Uh, it's a great trailer. So if you if you do if you guys haven't again if you haven't seen the movie, finish watching the show. Go watch the trailer and then go pick it up. It was it was streaming on Netflix. So if, yeah. you, if you have Netflix, you can live stream it on Netflix. It's fantastic, uh, as opposed to us trying to find like illegal links to movies. Oh, and on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it, the the beautiful part about uh, <laughs> this movie is that when I when I pulled it up on the Netflix streaming, I was thinking to myself when I saw it as a kid, I was like, oh, this movie's like two and a half hours long. It's a minute thirty six. Or an hour 36. That That's movie, it? It's only 96 minutes. Yeah. Oh, it seems longer. Yeah. Even last night, it seemed longer. Because <laughs> just so much happens. It's it it's kind of like uh, Speed. You know, at the beginning of Speed, it just is action-packed from beginning to end. It's yes. not ex exactly like the best movie, but there's not a dull moment when you're like, what's going to happen? Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great... It's so much fun yeah. for that. Yeah. Yes. And Kurt Russell's... Kurt Russell's character, Jack Burton. I mean, can you think of a better name? It's classic. <laughs> How would you describe him? <sighs> kind of like uh, that little league coach that was like the cool dad, but he was like he got divorced early, but he came to like <laughs> coach and he'd show up to games with like jean jackets <laughs> on and like with a beer in his hand and no shame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like telling anecdotes that are way too inappropriate. Way for inappropriate. Fifth graders. Look. If you ever make your way over to the, uh, I was going to say something. Gina's yeah, down at the snack bar. Great set of cans on Gina. Am I right? Get a couple of drinks in her and, uh, yeah, I don't want to tell you kids how to live your life, but when you're my age, woo. but he's like, he starts out and he's on that CB radio. We don't hear anybody else responding to him on the CB radio. Right. Yeah. He's just almost like giving like a verbal blog yeah. before his time. <laughs> You right? <laughs> he was doing like a podcast before there was podcasts on a CB radio yeah. from his from his truck. I wouldn't say I'm lonely, but uh, I'm gonna keep on talking until this trip's over. <laughs> and nobody's listening to him. And his truck is called the Pork Chop Express. For Christ's sake, so great! I mean, that's that's the name of a meal at a roadside diner somewhere in the middle of America. You know, you know what? One day we're gonna have to do a Schmoes field up uh, field trip road trip. Schmoes field trip. We'll yeah, get my mom to sponsor because she was a school teacher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just go like to diners and truck stops and talk movies and. How much fun would that be? Oh, actually? and we call our van the Pork Chop Express. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into the plot uh, for because I, we're really good at, at running these things down, and I think amidst the plots, we'll get into. Uh, you know what? Let's start with. Uh, do you remember the first time you saw this movie? Here's the thing. The I was just moment? texting my brother. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is what went down. Okay. I think my brother went. I think the Marys that lived across the street took my brother to the movies once during oh. the day and he came back bragging about how fun it was and then I refused to see it. <laughs> Out of spite for yeah, you, Yeah, I think what it was, yeah. He was like, oh, and Dan, there's monsters that know how to do karate and i was like i call bs no way there's no karate monsters and you didn't sneak out to uh try and see because this movie was rated r it was it was yeah there was a, there was an f-bomb dropped in there I'm and maybe sure. my dad had i remember my brother seeing it and i not i the uh, first time i ever saw it beginning to end pg-13 okay my bad, my bad that i think it yeah you know what i have this f f memory uh, from almost 30 years ago, my brother seeing it with the Merry Boys. Okay. Not Kenny, just Brian and Chris, the, the twins. <laughs> the Merry Boys. Yeah. They sound real masculine. <laughs> no, the Murrays, like Bill Murray. Oh, Murray. I thought you said Mary. Like my boy, Eddie Murray, son. <laughs> I got it. Uh, yeah, and I remember him talking about how awesome it was. And then this other kid, Jason, who lived in my neighborhood, they had also, he had also seen it. And then all the other kids were talking about how... Before there was podcast, guys, what you would do is you would see a movie, and then you would get on your bike, and then just go tell your friends about how awesome the movie was. And make them feel bad about it. Yeah, for not saying And then I was like, yeah. I don't even want to see the movie. <laughs> yeah, you wanted to be the cool kid that hadn't seen and it. And you know what? And I remember it being on cable and stuff oh, yeah. through, forever. It always comes on somewhere. Somewhere. But I've never seen it from beginning to end. And it was unbelievably awesome and fun. And it made me realize they don't know how to make movies that... I don't know if you would say this was an action movie, yeah. if this was a uh, sci-fi movie, if this was a comedy. <laughs> it brought all those elements together, and it was just fun. Yes. And like you said, maybe the plot wasn't stellar, but there's nonstop action, nonstop fun. Right. And it's like the type of movie that I think a, a six-year-old now or a 12-year-old now or a 14-year-old now who's never seen it would love it just as much as 
we did when we were I kids. agree. If you again, the, I think the point of this show we're trying to get about and it doesn't matter if if we talk about movies from 1986 or we talk about movies from 2010. If you want if you want to just have a good time at a movie and suspend belief to yeah. a certain extent. Listen, we're not talking about robots riding robot dinosaurs, okay? <laughs> like Transformers. We're talking about just going to a movie and enjoying yourself without being the consummate critic. Right. Right? Yeah, allow yourself to enjoy it. Right. So if you allow yourself to enjoy Big Trouble in Little China, you will get the biggest kick out of this Yeah, it's movie. awesome. Because I remember, here's the thing. My, one of my best friends from high school, his name is Max Young. Awesome, awesome dude. He was one of four kids, right? And they had a, a ski cabin up at Hidden Valley. Okay, which Ooh, was like- Ooh la a, Oh yeah. And we used to watch Dumb and Dumber and Big Trouble in Little China, like on loop. The Perfect, whole that sounds ought to, yes. I could see that easily. <laughs> and we would go up to girls at this place called The Clock Tower, which is where you'd like had dinner make and whatever. Out. Yeah, and he would go- Meet you, That sounds like an 80s movie. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go meet at the clock tower. Oh, it was, it was just like, as you'd imagine, right? Girls Once again, it's on. <laughs> and we would do the Jack Burton lines and nobody would get Oh, em. that's hysterical. And we would act like we were Jack Burton. We'd walk in there with like, we were all cock and you know, cock of the walk <laughs> as Jack Burton would. Cause he's, he, he, we starts on the CB radio and then he, he, all of a sudden he's just like plowed into this, this Asian Chinese 2000 century, 2000 year old war. Yes, and no well, what I thought was awesome. What well, all starts with his ha his drinking and gambling habit, <laughs> right? He's ha like he's he's on a seat. First, it opens up with that egg guy, Egg Shen, Egg Shen, and talking to a police officer or a he's basically detective. doing like a deposition in a law yeah, office. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay, and he's like, I refuse to turn in Jack ba <laughs> Jack, Jack, Jack Burton. Burton. I'm yeah. about to say Jack Bauer. <laughs> well, Jack Burton was the precursor. To Jack <laughs> yeah, Bauer, let's be honest. Uh, yeah. So then. And then it cuts to him hanging out, gambling all night long, oh, winning. Yeah. No problem. And then he's with his buddy. Wang. Who, Wang, who yeah. challenges him, who says double or nothing. I no, can nothing or double. Nothing or double. Is that what it was? <laughs> they flipped it. Yeah. That's hysterical. Yeah. To smash the bottle, right? Yes, yes. Actor's name is Dennis. No, he, he says he can cut the bottle in half with like a machete looking meat cleaver, which... I mean, you, you, listen, they're Asian. Uh, as a white man, I always think that an Asian can do anything they claim can do because they have special <laughs> powers. Okay. And so he can't do it. He wins nothing or double. But there's something that like, he's like, oh, don't worry about it. You, know, I, you have to come back to my place and I'll pay you. I don't have the money on me. Yeah. So they go to their place and all of a sudden they're in an alley in a nope. truck. Nope. Nope. What am I missing? We miss because no, he's remember he was like, I gotta go to the restaurant, I gotta do this, but first I have to pick up my fiance from the airport. At the airport. Right. This is like the inciting incident. Oh, this yeah, is where it, is. it goes down. Right. And this is where we get our first shot of Kim Cottrell. And she is smoking hot in this Yeah, movie. I um never th like uh, I, I don't wanna how can I say this and not go ahead. she was really pretty in this movie. Oh my god. Like I went, Oh, that's why people Dangerously think she's attractive. Hot. Yeah. Because I didn't think and, she was attractive later in her career. Well, in Sex and the City, she I think she would have been way more attractive had she played, like, the innocent woman. But she played, like, that raging slut, and I never really yeah, found that too attractive. Um, but she was in... Well, was she, she was in Mannequin, right? She was the... I think she was in Porky's as well. Was she? She was... Okay, so she... Hold on, let me see. Let me pull this up. Uh... Mannequin, yeah, she played the mannequin in Mannequin. Mark Ellis is going to hate me for not knowing that because he's probably quoted it like fifty times. Like <laughs> Kim Cattrall is mannequin, but she was smoking hot in that he's movie. He's watching too. this podcast right now. Mannequin, <laughs> Ma mention mannequin. mannequin. She, had he been on the couch like he was the first? Go ahead, JT. What you got, buddy? Oh, uh, let's not forget she was in the classic Police Academy. Oh, yes! she was in Police Academy. Oh, JTE coming in hot. Thank you for that great addition. We don't Dude, get we JTE have to, involved enough in this bro, show. Bro, that was classic. That yes. was like at the buzzer, half-court shot. <laughs> uh, police Academy. Trained, and you're hitting something that JT knows well. He says he's a basketball player. I can't see it, but apparently he is. Um, <laughs> in fact, they're laughing. And so, okay, so now he's got to go to the airport to meet his fiance. And he says, as she's getting off the plane, Jack, she's got green eyes. Do you know how rare that is? Yeah. And that's just like the little the little seed put in they're our planting them. They're planting right. the plot seed. Yeah. Now, who shows up at the airport? The bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> then the bad guys are there dressed. There's the street gang bad guys. Yeah, and they're dressed sort of like they're in an Asian, like a 1980s Asian boy band. Like they yeah, they kind of look like they have breakdancing skills and not necessarily <laughs> martial arts skills. Sort of like, what's that, uh, That uh, the Jabberwockies? They almost look like 1980s yes. Jabberwockies. Yeah, and, but during that time, I'm old enough to remember that mm -hmm. era where like uh, my dad would see kids like, hey, look at those punk rocker kids. <laughs> So there was like this hybrid of kids just trying to be cool. They look like punk rocker martial artist break dancers, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> they have 
purple mohawks and leather fingerless gloves and S and M bracelets. <laughs> holy shit that's incredible <laughs> right like oh my, there were, my point being that like all different sort of subculture things overlap because yes. people just wanted to be cool yeah they, i feel like they just put accessories on these kids yeah and they were like you're in a street gang now yeah so they they kidnap they're trying to kidnap the one asian girl right that is there to see, <sighs> see Kim this Cattrall? is where it gets a little confusing yeah for me. go ahead kim cattrall plays an attorney right so she's at the airport. Does she say attorney? Or, yeah. Oh, she's attorney. Okay. Yeah. Because then the other lady that winds up showing up is the reporter. Who is Jack Burton's sister. Her name is Kate Burton in the movie. Really? Yes. All right. So, the, okay. Or this that's was, just a coincidence. Okay. So, Wang, who is okay. Jack Burton's drinking buddy, gambling buddy, buddy. and the guy who's going to the airport right. to pick up his fiance. He saved every penny he's earned for the last five years to bring back this green eyed beauty. Yet now they're at the, yes, Jack Burton. please <laughs> makes no sense. Sure. So then Jack Burton's there to hang out with his buddy and to make sure he gets paid Correct. and sees Kim Cattrall. And he's like, who's that hot babe? Yeah. And then Wang, his buddy's like, don't even worry about it. Yeah. And then the don't even Kim try, Cattrall Jack. is there to make sure some other chick getting off the plane from Peking or whatever, right. doesn't get kidnapped by the punk rock rocker break dancing karate gang because they're going to sell her in his uh slavery a sex slavery I'm yeah guessing. like some it's pretty sort of, adult it's, it's an adult theme and a, not crazily adult right because then she kidnaps the other girl so then they kidnap the girl with green eyes they're instead. just like well there's one more asian girl at the airport might as well steal her steal her right so now jack burton and wang go to save his green-eyed fiance correct so and now, now down back. the rabbit hole we go exactly so now they drive his truck again if we haven't stressed this enough that jack burton is a badass truck driver he's driving an 18 wheeler he's now in chinatown he's dropped off his load of whatever he's delivering to Chinatown and I know where you're going with the load okay I got you and he he, he gets in this alley and now they're in the midst of okay, like this was the coolest scene ever without a doubt they're now they're in the midst of an, an Asian gang shootout fight they all have like machetes samurai swords guns they have every weapon at one point they're they all have swords and then you turn around the next minute they all have crazy guns yeah I yeah that was it got heightened fast right and then it went from like fists to martial arts weapons to guns to magic oh it, like immediately yep right like and, that and the crazy part is is that wang and jack burton don't leave the truck yeah they're they in just the midst stay. of a hail of gunfire and no no bullet hits the truck not at all not a bullet not no whatever they're like holy cow and they keep they're just like commenting and, and the camera will cut to them and they're just like oh they're making these reactions well shots. i thought the coolest was i forget this guy's name he's one of my favorite um extra martial arts stunt actors of all time we could pull him up uh, you, which one Wait, who does he play uh, he's just an extra in it. He's the guy that was like oh. in a couple episodes of the A Team. He's the Asian guy with the Fu Manchu and he the was crazy in, hair. He, he was in Starsky and Hutch. He had he's been in kid, everything. Yeah, and kid through the knives. Yeah, Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forget his name. I just looked him up last night. Okay. It's like something he was Liang. In Die Hard also. Yeah, he was in yeah, Die Hard. Yes. Yes. Dude, he's in yes. everything. He's my favorite yeah. person. And I was reading about him last night too because I did a podcast once and I went, that guy's nope, that's no, not him. That's not him. He spells his last name like L E O N G or something like that. Long, Leong. Yeah. I'm thinking it was totally something different than... No, this dude's awesome. Okay. Let me... And he's the one, like, you, you just see him in the middle of the street gang, and he's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's aw And then, so, so they're in the middle of this, the street gang, and then all of a sudden, three dudes descend from the sky. Yeah. And they're wearing... You know how, like, in, in, in like Vietnam, they have those, like, the, the rice paddy hats that they have to wear to block mm -hmm. out the sun? These guys have ones that are, like, 15 times the size and look like lampshades at my Aunt Norris's house. Yeah, they almost... <laughs> They almost look like aliens, right? Yes, yeah. Like, I didn't know if they came from another dimension or a spaceship. Or... There's lightning all around them. They they have a, a superpower, obviously. Yeah, and they were kind of... It reminded me a little bit of The Last Dragon, another one of my favorite martial arts movies. I don't movies. think I've ever seen The Last Dragon. Oh, my God. We have... Dude, The Last Dragon's amazing. JT, have you seen The Last Dragon? JT's pissed. Tell have I like, seen The Last Dragon? Dude, isn't that one of the best show movies enough. ever? <laughs> when I say, who's the master, you say, show, show enough. enough. <laughs> who's in this movie? Oh, bro, it came out like a year before for uh, oh Big Trouble in Little China. Okay. And it talks about the glow. When you're the master, your hands will glow. Okay. Dude, we're going to have... Okay, we'll have to figure out a reason to watch okay. that movie coming up. Okay. So... But it's very similar. It's like, this movie is The Last Dragon plus Gremlins, kind of. This sounds perfect. Holy mm -hmm. shit. Okay, so... Uh, 
So now these guys descend from the sky, and now this is the time we're like, Jack, we got to get out of here. Not when they were fighting in front of the truck, and there was swords. Not when there was bullets. And there was guns. No, they're like, as soon as lightning appears in the form of a human being, who's like, run these guys over with your truck. Yes. Right. So he runs them over, or they jump out of the way. They like, like the one jumps, the one jumps, and the other one just goes straight vertical. Yes. Right. Like he's in an elevator. Yes. That's on fire. And then Lo pans there, then right? Lo pan shows for up for no reason. For no reason, and they crush him with the truck. And you see him like get hit with the truck, and then he doesn't appear and then he's fine on the other side and that's when Jack Burton's like well sh- what was that man <laughs> yeah because yeah. he had lasers coming out of his eyes and, and his, his mouth. mouth yeah so now they're in the midst of like holy cow we're just beca- we just stumbled upon this three thousand two thousand year old war and this is when Egg Shen starts telling him about like what's going on yeah is that okay because I got confused because so much happens this is like okay so it starts off uh, they're gambling. They go to yeah. the airport to pick up the fiance, uh-huh. and then boom! From that point on, it's pretty much nonstop it's action. It's a war underground of Ch- Little China, not Chinatown. It's yeah. Little China because yeah. they witness this street fight in the alley, right? And then don't they have to flee on foot? They leave his truck there. They leave his truck. Now the funny thing is, is they cut to them in like uh, Egg Shen's restaurant or yes. whatever is like or Wang's cousin's restaurant, and Kim Cattrall's already there, and uh, the other girls there, and they're talking about how they need to get um. Mo Pan, what's um, Mo Pan's like the gangster who's also a demon. no, 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 the girl that he's in love with. Uh, oh, I forget her name, uh, the girl with green eyes. W- Wang, Ch- nope, that's the girl with green eyes. Yeah, the girl with green eyes. Let's just call her whatever. Mwa, Mwa Yin, Mia, Susie Pai is the actress's name, Mia Yin is the, is the girl's name. Okay, okay, now they're talking about how they have to go get it. And Egg Shen's like, listen, you can't just go into Lo Pan's dungeon and expect to get her. And then they have this legend of like these, this green eyed thing. Yeah. And so they're like, well, Jack Burton's like, listen, nobody takes my truck and gets away with it. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go take on anybody. I don't care if they're black magic Chinese emperors, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, as soon as they go in there, uh, they like take an elevator. They, like, okay, wait. Doesn't something happen? Wasn't there a scene before that where he like dresses up as a nerd? Oh, right. And they go to the brothel. <laughs> right. And, and he's wearing the same suit that he wore in um, used cars. Yeah, yeah. Used yeah. cars, another classic. Yeah, yeah. So he goes in there and he tries to like he he tries to infiltrate this brothel. Yeah. So I I don't remember because like I said I'm not so much happens in the movie. So they find out a little bit about Lo Pan, but I don't. Right. Do they know if Lo Pan's the black magic guy yet? No. Yes, or is he they just know the because he's like he's a legend underground. Like, okay. Egg, and Egg Shen is like another sorcerer, but we don't really know Egg Shen is until a little bit later in the movie. Anyway, okay. so so he's in the brothel, and then he's asked about this girl with the green eyes, but he's acting like he's a used car salesman, right? And then all of a sudden, Lo Pan finds out about this girl with the green eyes in and the then brothel, he, and then he like kidnaps her or something. Well, right? he like Magically? lights the brothel up. Yeah, like, he like blows like up Ghostbuster the brothel style. Correct. Yeah, uh, the on Ghostbusters two, and they have the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they kidnap the girl with the green eyes. Now they have to go find. They, now they have to infiltrate Lopan's castle. Or yeah. So now, yeah, the green eye girl gets kidnapped. So now they have to go to the real underground. Right. And let's be honest, the girls that are in this movie, if we're talking ladies of Big Trouble in Little China, Kim Cattrall looking smoking. Yeah, she was great. While Ma Pei, while Ma Yin is, I mean, an Asian girl with green eyes, hot. But incredible. you know what? I th- even thought the other Asian chick was just as hot. She was pretty cute. The one that we just sort we of just forget s- exists. Oh yeah, because she didn't get kidnapped, so she yeah. just got like sh- shut yeah, aside. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then Kim Cattrall's like not so hot friend slash Jack Burton's sister, which we're not really sure. Yeah, the reporter. The chick. reporter. She just kind of looked like a, a like a busted April O'Neil. I don't know who April was, O'Neil was. The Ninja Turtles you're wearing. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I thought that was somebody we knew. <laughs> I thought that was like a comedian. <laughs> I was like, did I go to middle school with her? <laughs> She was one of the Murray's girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> she went to the movies with your little brother and Brian and Chrissy Murray. <laughs> yeah, she saw before you did. Uh, so then we get to, so then they, they like go into this, what looks like an old, old uh, it's like a warehouse for, for Asian trinkets that they're like selling in, in oh, Little China. Yeah. But they have like things and then they get in the elevator and they get down there. I love, okay, how awesome are secret passageways? Oh, incredible. The and coolest thing ever. This movie right? had more secret passageways. More secret than passageways. Yeah, yeah, that's what made this. There was awesome karate fights. Mm-hmm. There was awesome awesome magical karate fights there was gunfights knife fights secret passageways we haven't even gotten into the monsters no hot chicks delicious chinese food yeah chinese food in movies always, always looks delicious so right? good. and they're always eating noodles out of a box and to this day i will not not eat noodles out of the box yeah it's so good <sighs> but i what is that uh what kind of noodles are those is that what it is it's lo mein, lo mein. yeah or chow fun uh 
But so, so now they're, they're in the elevator. The elevator starts filling up in, the, in with water. And then they're like, oh, we're yes. done. And they open up the elevator, which if you know anything about physics and water pressure on a door, they can't Pretty open Pretty difficult. That. They can't do that. They get out and there's just like bodies hanging with like crabs Scary. eating them. Yeah, it reminded me of Goonies, Goonies. a little bit. This, yeah. was like a, this was like an Asian Goonies at this part. Yes. Right? It's like the Chinese Goonies underneath. And so finally they get to this thing and they get out of the water and then they look up and there's like the head, like the head badass dude of Lopan's gang the guy oh, that blows up yeah right? so he gets him out and he ties him to wheelchairs for whatever reason blindfolds him and then it leaves him for whatever they don't like really know what to do with him yeah like they should have been they should have just killed them right yeah i don't understand when they didn't die right away but then but that's what makes all yeah, action, action movies awesome right so then jack burton figures out that he can like rock the wheelchair over and get out and then but that but now they are so then they come back to see him, and he and he jumps on the one dude's shoulder, and he's like, "Make a move!" And the dude makes a move and like whips him up. Yeah, yeah so and he's great. Like, that was part of the reason why this movie's so awesome. There's so many laughs in it. Oh, it's incredible. So many laughs. Because Jack Burton has amazing one-liners, right? Yep. Amazing one-liners. Uh, that I mean, there's a bunch of them, but I think we got to we'll do the one at the end because it's the be maybe the best one in okay <laughs> ever. But. Uh, and he like every time he tries to do something powerful, he botches it. Yeah, it's great. Right? It's like you and your brother trying to be ninjas, but you're none of you trained yeah, no, ninjas. Exactly. Right. That. You remember the movie Beverly Hills Ninja with Chris Farley? Loved it. He's like the precursor to Beverly Hills Ninjas. <laughs> sort of. He had his buddy who was, uh, you know, he was the the Chinese dude that was going to save his fiance. So he obviously knew karate. But Jack Burton didn't. All Jack Burton knew how to do was try and punch dudes in the face as hard as he could. Yeah, and pull out a sweet knife out of his, <laughs> that, like... That kind of looked like a fruity, Ginzu. And his fruity, like, f pirate boots. Yeah. He's like, goes into those and pulls out a knife. The best is when they give him the machine gun, which is about now, right? He, he gets yeah. the machine gun. They they go in with... Uh, well, there's the shotgun, the pistol, and the machine gun. And, Jack, and it was very funny how he... They all yeah, got yeah. it, right? I'll take that one. And then he gets the... the his, and then the, the dude that's wearing, like, the plaid suit gets the crappy pistol. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then they go in there and they have to, they, they find this, this place where they think they're going to get uh, Mao Yin, but it's just, it's like a whole bunch of girls in cages, like in Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, where they're all just like in cages. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they have to free these people. So he, they go in there and there's like this random fight with these, these girls with bamboo sticks. They can oh, now they're like girl yeah, they're ninjas. Like guard, yeah. The girl ninjas. Are guarding, guarding the, the other, yeah, yeah. Which I didn't really, and we never saw any more girl ninjas the rest of the time we were there, right? Yeah, there was a lot of weird stuff in this movie, and so all the girls are in cages. The reporters writing what seems to be a romance novel. Kim Cattrall is just sitting there looking all pretty, and Jack Burton has no idea how they're going to get out. Then they they beat the girls, and then all the cages release, and they fall down this tube, and then swim to freedom through what seems like a, a hole way too small for you to feel safe swimming through. Yeah, like we're gonna jump in the water, and the first move is I know where there's a tunnel. Yes. So I don't where they found that. Yeah, tunnel, it's just I have a no whole idea. adventure. Yeah. So then they get up and they get the girls to safety. Uh, except for Kim Cattrall, like a door opens. She's like, "Oh, what's down this hallway?" And a giant monster that looks like it's from Labyrinth grabs her. <laughs> yes. Okay. Where does this monster come from? I don't know. And why is it down there? And why w w there was no. There was no real rhyme or reason for that monster to nope, be down there. We, not at all. There was never any mention in the folklore of this nope. monster that we were like a, a, a foreshadowing. It comes out of absolute nowhere. Yep. He's got giant claws. He looks like a bad mask that you get on Halloween that was in the real expensive section. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Mom, I want that mask. And she's like, dream on, idiot. Those $50 rubber masks. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting that one, They're Josh. movie props. They're not <laughs> yeah. even Halloween costumes. John, he wants to get the, the mask. Yeah. Okay. Like, we're going to get him that one. Time out. Idiot. Sidebar. How great was Halloween shopping when you were a kid figuring yeah. out your costume uh, and looking at all the masks? And knowing full well that your mom was only going to spend 20 bucks on your yeah. costume. How am I going to bump her up to 50? <laughs> but what mom, can I do? Look at how great I'd look. Nobody will know who I am if I You're wear You're going to wear your Kermit the Frog again. Just shut up. <laughs> so the, the monster. Being this, 11 was awesome. Yeah, wasn't it though? So, so then they get on the bus. And this was probably the first time I saw this movie was probably when I was 11. Not even to say. Yep. They that's, get, I'd say that's a good age to watch this movie. So the reporter gets on the bus. Everybody gets on the bus. Jack, everybody, except for the two people that they're trying to get. Kim oh, Cattrall doesn't make it because she gets yeah. the monster. And we still haven't seen Mao Yin. 
right? Yeah, because she's floating for some reason. Right. Because of magic. Right. She's like in a state of suspended disbelief floating in the air. I think the the perfect hashtag for this movie is because of magic. Hashtag <laughs> because of magic is perfect. what you just said. Because of magic. You just go in and she's in this pristine room and she's just floating there in this flowing white gown and like creepy, really old uh, Lopan, who we forgot to mention, they met Lopan. Remember them and they met Lopan and he was like yeah. dying. Yeah. He looked like Because there's two different versions of Lopan, right? Yeah, there's Lopan, the, the creepy creepy old man who's like that's why he needs to get married to a lady with green eyes right right so he can get flesh and become human again as the low pan we see later in the movie yeah who's like the ghost low pan right right but he's Got like that at home schmo <laughs> you figuring that one out there's two low pans in one body we'll go with that yeah you got it okay so they go back to the sweet chinese food store right yes and they're eating more chinese noodles that look delicious yes and they they team up with the gang the good gang in the original gang shootout yes okay so the the guys that do this there's the guys that do the pinkies together and then the guys that do the uh like the sort of the hunger games move i guess yes you kind of see it so they're like oh these guys are going to help us no problem I'm like all right great so uh, I will. For, oh, we forgot to, to talk. When they were trying to get the girls out of that thing, they go to the thing and he opens the door and the whole gang is standing there and then they have Hysterical. to close it. That's an amazing part. And then Jack goes to like, and he comes back to help him fight and, and Wang's already killed everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there were, we, how they lied to get into the building. Hey, we just got to go check on something. So great. I love all those laughs. Like, I'm going to put on a disguise and nobody will know who I am. That sort of stuff. <laughs> it's not like they were checking the cable box or something like that. Uh, so oh, no. It was like a phone line. Whatever. Awesome. So then they get and they're like, listen, we got to take down Chow Fun. But, or uh, Lo Pan. But Lo Pan is being, uh, he, he, we don't realize until now that Egg Fan or Egg Shen, Egg Shen, Egg Shen is a sorcerer. And he's got all these old chemicals and bombs oh, and everything. Yeah. And he basically does the commando where he like straps himself full of Chinese. Yeah, but with magic with, remedies. Because magic. Because, because of magic. magic. And now they're ready to take on those. Yeah, and he's got the special bottle for the end. Right. Which looks like a gourd. Yes, it right. does. Halloween gourd. Right. And then they do, they basically, they're getting ready and they get to this one part and they get down to like what seems like the frat bar in the basement of Lopan's place and like, all right, it's time to take your magic potion. Yes. And then instead of doing some kind of like Chinese ritual they're just like to America <laughs> yeah they just start to to the army and the navy the red white and blue these colors don't run <laughs> whatever was awesome yeah so then they're like they're in the elevator and it's kind of like when you do mushrooms and you're like I'm feeling pretty good Am I, are you feeling it are you feeling it I'm feeling it yeah essentially it was just whiskey it was, was the yeah. magic potion <laughs> yeah and the door opens and then all of a sudden they can jump like the guys with the lightning can yeah and they get to Lopan's like major situation like his big layer well he's yeah because he's gonna be getting married he has to marry one of the girls with green eyes right yeah and now and then guess what he's gonna marry both of them two eyes because he's a selfish bastard yeah two girls with green eyes now gives him super the power yeah because then he could kill one and stay married to one right which is Sort of, I mean, that's and then there's that giant blob thing that's kind of like in oh, Flash right. Gordon. You remember the, in Flash Gordon? It was kind of like what's happening now with the drones yes. where they can watch us forever. And this Except is like a, it looks like a cabbage pa or a, a, a garbage pail kid. Yeah, it looks like a garbage pail kid and kind of like that thing they turned Chet into from Weird Science. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, but it's just like a and it's got a million eyes on it. And it's a floating orb. Yeah, basically. And it, it, it low pan can control it like it's a remote control. Thing. Yes. It's his drone, okay? Yes. And he finds out that they're all there, and they infiltrate it. And then we get to Lopan's lair, and we realize that it's like a club in 1980s Miami. It's just got like... <laughs> Crockin' and Tubbs are in the corner yeah, doing shots. Scarface is at a table getting Sam. shot. Up. <laughs> That's hysterical. So, Bel Belzer's on stage doing comedy. <laughs> just one liner after one liner. And then all of a sudden, because they have the super juice in them, they can fight everybody everybody and the lightning dudes don't have what they have and everybody kind of like squares off with one another but jack burton like fires guns in the ceiling and the ceiling falls and it knocks him out yeah, at the so most of the, of the fight yeah yeah so then he saves kim patrell and then kim patrell and him are having like what is the equivalent of a uh, marital marital spat in the yeah. midst of pure pandemonium yeah and it's also very han solo princess leia right? very the relationship. very much so or indiana jones and every love interest in all the movies that he has yes right so finally they like Lopan takes the girls he takes uh, Mao Yin because that's the only way he can stay alive is like if he keeps taking her flesh and like making him into flesh right? yeah, yeah he's gotta like do something with her blood or something right. so he's always like sucking her blood or like stabbing her with needles yeah I don't know what happened they get up to his what could be his like his sitting room like his cigar room which just has like gold Buddha statues oh yeah right? and 
yeah. they're up in there and he's like get out of here and then so uh jack burton tries to throw his knife at him because that's the jack burton move because all he has is the hysterical, knife. hysterical yeah he misses it it hits the gong uh low pan picks it up whips it back at jack burton jack burton catches it one hit, that was awesome throws it Puts it right in his head, and he's like, it's all in the reflexes. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. To me, that's my... Because he says that at the beginning of the movie, too, right? Right. Now, what we glazed over, and I think is our greatest one-liner of the whole movie, is he's they're in that fight scene, and he's just made out with uh, Geisha... Um, uh, Kim, Cattrall. Kim Cattrall and he's got the lipstick on his face and they're up oh, there yeah. he's about to throw the knife at whoever and he's like you know what old Jack Burton says at a time like this JT could you play that for me I don't think I can do it justice nah, you know what old Jack Burton always says at a time like this who? Jack Burton me <laughs> what the hell <laughs> it's, it's so good It's I mean and that was the thing my buddy Max Young used to say that to girls all the time or like if we were in a sticky situation and travel baseball like, and it was like full count he like pulls out do it all this Jack Burton always says <laughs> it was incredible so then he he then he throws a knife throws it in and Lopan dies all is well except that now there's they, they still have to fight the guy that is throwing the lightning around yeah I really thought that as soon as Lopan died everybody yeah. else would just kind of give up yeah, no, they're no. still fighting the good fight. And in classic like Asian karate movies, they don't go right into the fight. They have to do their theatrics. They're like, -na 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 -na, and yeah. shooting lightning everywhere. And uh, Egg Shen is like, this is where I come in, right? And then instead of uh, like, they all avoid, they like run out, they get up there, they have like this, what is like a short rounds thing in the Goonies. He shoots it in there and they like oh, run yeah. little ropes up into the thing. And then Egg Shen just like drops a big Buddha on it. That's what kills him. That's just yeah. what kills Lightning Man. Yeah, it all happened that's so that. fast. And then that's it. And then at the end, they're all like sitting around, like giggling up, like, yo, we just ended the 2,000 year old war. Congratulations. And then in instead of Jack Burton sticking around to be with Kim Cattrall, he's like, ah, sorry, time to get back on the Pork Chop Express. Babe, I'm leaving. <laughs> I must be on my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he's at the end, right? He just leaves her there. Doesn't even ki give her a kiss goodbye. Not yep. my style. Just wearing his Harley Davidson hat and Jack Burton hitting the open road. And then, do you remember the last image of the movie? Yeah, the monster's the on monster's the truck. The on the back of his truck. We never killed the monster. He's there. So what is that? Opening for a sequel? Was that I the guess. thought? Was that the thought? I'd pay to see that sequel right now. Just verse the monster? Or like a short film of Kurt Russell and the monster shot? That would shot. be awesome. You know what it would have probably would have done? <laughs> Him and the monster on vacation. <laughs> High like high fives free frames, <laughs> yeah. but like in movies now, they it probably wouldn't like we had to wait to the end of the credits, and then there's a picture of like Jack Burton at a truck stop, and he like kills the monster. He's like, "How much you guys want for this monster head?" Like, or, he, yeah, there would be that little egg uh, Easter egg at the end, but it would just be like them gambling or something. Yeah, yeah. Now here's my we talked about this before, and we're both on the same page. Okay, there's something behind this movie that had to inspire Mortal Kombat. Oh, a hundred percent so. Because because of magic, right? Because, karate, because, because of, of magic. magic. JT, throw karate the, magic. Throw the picture up of the lightning guy. Okay, you guys are going to see a picture of the lightning guy. That guy looks like Raiden. Remember Raiden? Yeah. And Raiden was always throwing lightning bolts, and he had that hat, and he was do whatever. And then Shang Tsung, throw up Shang Tsung. This is Lo Pan. Lo Pan and Shang Tsung looked exactly alike. Yeah. And you had the the white guy, Jack Burton. There was a white guy in in uh, Mortal Kombat, and there the, in in the, there was the two brothers in um in Mortal Kombat that were Scorpion and Sub Zero. Oh yeah. They, they were like brothers separated at birth, and they were like mortal enemies now. Well, they're like the other two guys that fight with Thunder, right? Yeah. And then there's the big the big oh we forgot to talk about how the guy the Asian dude like blew, blew up. up at the end. Yeah. He got so mad, and that guy was like the best at karate. I yeah, think, in he the whole was. Movie. He, he was actually a police trainer for the Hong Kong police for years. Like, he he taught martial arts to the Hong Kong police. Oh, yeah. Well, real karate guy. Right. Yeah. And he, like, instead of going to try and fight him, he just, like, he's so angry, he throws a childhood tantrum, which we all thought we could do, and he literally explodes. <laughs> That's awesome. And then they're awesome. out in the hall, and then, like, a, yeah. And then, oh... And then, uh, and then the, it cuts to like them out in the hall, and it looks like somebody just threw like a bag of cabbage into the hallway with like blood. Yeah. It was like that was supposed to be his body exploding. And then throw up the movie poster, JT, because the movie poster for for Big Trouble Little China is it's incredible. This it's is awesome. Like, this is like what old movie posters used to look like. They were like they were painted. They had everything going on in the movie. You could buy something like this and like hang it in your house and almost look like artwork. It is cool. Tells a right? story. Tells a story. You got Jack Burton on the cover, Kim Cattrall hugging him, low pan in the background. Basically what Mortal Kombat probably could have put on their front, the front of their game and we all been like, because there was a yeah, Big I Trouble in Little China I, video game. You know There that? was? Yeah, I didn't know Atari, that. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, or something like that. It was it was in something, uh, but there was a video game. But I, I I know that there was this had to have inspired Mortal Kombat. There's 100% no other way. So. Yeah, uh, and there they are. That's and I think it really is just like a great movie from that time frame because it really does have a Goonies feel to it. It yeah. has a Last Dragon feel to it. It has. J- there's a sense of fun that those movies in the mid 80s had that right they should really bring back and jack great. burton yeah was the main character but really or truly he was a sidekick because he was you know yeah like, and the greatest thing about jack burton was is that he just ran into trouble you know there Vic- was no a like victim of circumstance he there was no calculation in what he was going to do oh yeah well you remember like in the very beginning of the movie it was like he's a very brave man yeah, he yeah. just goes straight in He's like, if he was a football player, he'd be on special teams. Yeah, He's just like, just, I'll run straight down. Right. He's like, uh, I wouldn't go in there. He's like, I'm going in there. You know? Yeah, I got to get my truck back. Because yeah. he's worried about insurance premiums. So he has yeah, to he kind of reminds me of like Indiana Jones's like sidekick brother. Yeah. That's just trying to hang out and might have a little bit of a drinking problem. <laughs> that's just like, eh, I'm not as good at... What is that guy's name? Uh, Marcus? Marcus, I think was his name. Because he it was... Uh, the other guy in the movie? No, no, no. In Indiana Jones's buddy. Marcus? The guy that owned the museum? Oh, yeah. Or are you talking about the big guy with the beard? No, I meant just like that's who Jack seems to me like. He'd be like in in, in, in movie land okay. if they all lived together. <laughs> if there was a place where everybody in, that in all the movies was real. Wouldn't that be just amazing? The coolest. Like Indiana Jones is like skilled and has it together. Right. Jack Burton's like a, a little bit off. Yeah. Well, he's a truck driver. Yeah. <laughs> But he still has that same sense of adventure and the same heart. Yeah. He's just not as good at it. Well, he, Jack Burton has like a, a form of Asperger's where he just like says whatever comes to his mind. Hysterical. No, no social graces. Won't give the girl a kiss goodbye. But he goes into it. He's like, I'm at an airport. Might as well hit on this broad. And he's like, I'm going to go get my truck back and try to try and make out with this girl. Yeah. Why didn't he make out with her at the he, end? He kissed her in the, the tunnel and then he kissed her with the geisha. But then at the end, he's like, you know what? The Pork Chop Express can't be, can't be saddled down. Yeah, that's it. So great, oh, babe. Good. I can't be slowed down. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go to a little um, a little trivia, a little little Josh McCuga, uh, Big Trouble in Little China oh, trivia. No, you're so for, good at this for this. Okay, <clears throat> uh, during the filming, Kurt Russell suffered from a bad case of what virus, which actually caused him to sweat for real instead of actually them putting fake movie sweat on. I have no idea. He got the what flu. Vi- he really did? He had the flu for a lot of the movie, and he had a fever, and they, he just kept sweating. And I was like, so he's kissing girls and everything, but he's got real flu? How is not everybody on the set sick? Sick, yeah. Okay, two. Um, the original script was a Western, and instead of Jack Burton's truck being stolen, it was his what? Oh, I know this. Okay. Does it's cheating if I know it. Well, I know. Go ahead. His horse, Yeah, right? it was his horse. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Well done. Okay. Uh, the tour bus that Egg Shen drove is currently being used for tours in what national park? Really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. No, yeah. but I want to go. I have no idea. Yellowstone. Really? It drives you around to all the geysers. Is it painted the same thing? It's painted yellow. Yeah. Oh, dude, we should let's awesome, do that. Right? Okay. The scene where Kurt Russell... <clears throat> oh, no, we already did that. It's a 1980 movie. Kurt Russell used cars. I didn't know that. Okay. Over under 50 for the body count. Oof. Is that... Include the street gang fight in the alley? It includes the street gang fight in the alley. Over, uh, under 50. Over. Under 46. Really? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Damn. When you think about the the um, the the fight, there's really only like 15 on 15. Yeah. It seems like there's more, but they're in an alley, so you know. Yeah, cramped and spaces. You know what's kind of funny is I bet that scene was like the inspiration for the, the scene between Ron Burgundy and the other gang. Like the, uh, oh, the 100% so. The same. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Um, Kim Cattrall and Susie Pye, the girls that play, um, you know... The hot chicks? Yeah. Uh, have what color eyes, really? So I'm guessing it's not green? Mm-mm. They both wear contacts. I'll go with brown. Yeah, that is correct. Brown. All right. Steve Simone coming in hot. Okay. Over under two months, the post-production process took. Over uh, under two months. I don't know. Under... Over four months it took to, to edit and, and put this movie out. I should have gone over. Okay. Uh, 
I well, think, there's so much happening in that movie. Yeah. And I definitely think this was supposed to be something, and they're like, well, we, look, we can't explain it. All right, man? We just made this up, and there's that's There's too it. much going on. I actually have two more questions, but I already, we already did them. I, I blew over them in the opening. I think I just got a little too excited for Big Yeah, it was the best. Yeah. I'm so, so happy I finally saw this movie from beginning to end. Me too. I think this... I mean, I definitely saw it from beginning, but I haven't seen it in so long that it was such like a welcome addition to my day yesterday. Just yeah, so much great. fun. This is so much fun. You, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Guilty Movie Pleasures. Steve, you got anything you want to promote? You want to talk about? Uh, my website, awesomesteve.com. I do a podcast called Good Times, which is similar to this, but yeah. not just focused on movies. When yeah. can, I want to get you on uh, there. Let's talk about it after. And okay. then uh, next week, we are going to be doing... Uh, Shmova, you guys have asked us to tell you what movie we're going to do the week following. Next week. Are we really going to do it? Let's do it. Announce it. Okay, so next week, the movie November Man is released. And the quote in November Man is, You're the November Man. Whenever you pass through, nothing lives. So I believe we're going to be taking... Taken. Yes, I love that Taken. movie. A modern classic on a guilty pleasure, guys. We're going to be doing Taken next week because Steve and I have a very specific set of skills. You can follow us on Twitter, at Josh McCuga. At Steve Simone. Uh, like us. Uh, go to our Facebook page, Guilty Movie Pleasure on the Schmoes No Network. Uh, Cody, our intern, is running the whole thing. He puts up posters. He puts on all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, we post all kinds of stuff on our Facebooks and our Twitter. iTunes. Go to iTunes. Rate it. Subscribe. Because that really helps us. It keeps the show going. Keeps actually. the show going. And Schmoville, go to uh, the, um, the SK Podcast is the YouTube channel. This is where all of these are released. Profiles, Jedi Alliance, Meet the Movie Press. Uh, thank you guys as always for watching. And we'll see See you next time. Till now, put out the gang symbol. Later, dudes. From producers Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, and the entire Schmoes No Network crew, we would like to thank you for listening to Guilty Movie Pleasures. What's your pleasure? Special thanks to Kevin Undergaro and Maria Manunos, the author of Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness in Stores Now. To watch or listen to other Guilty Pleasure movie episodes or other episodes of the Schmoes No Network shows, get movie news, or to join the conversation, be sure to visit schmoesno.com. I'm the Pit Boss, and this has been a presentation of the Schmoes No Network. <laughs>